if you are just getting into AI, you must have already become overwhelmed by the sheer number of machine learning and AI related research papers, algorithms and systems, especially because every day new frameworks and concepts are introduced, which makes you think it would be impossible to keep track of them all. What if I told you that almost all of these advancements are based on just a handful of papers and concepts and that fortunately you do not really need to know every paper out there and every new information that is announced, at least at this initial stage. All you need is to spend the next 10 minutes of your time getting to know these very important research papers, concepts and algorithms to save hours and to get ahead of 99% in AI. And that is not a bluff. If you can master the understanding of these fundamental concepts and practices, you will be able to navigate your way in the machine learning world much faster and easier on your own. If anything, the learning part in machine learning couldn't have been possible without the concept of backpropagation, which was introduced by David Remelhart, Jeffrey Hinton, and Ronald Williams in this really important 1986 nature paper, Learning Representations by Backpropagating Errors. They start their paper with, we describe a new learning procedure, backpropagation for networks of neuron-like units. The procedure repeatedly adjusts the weights of the connections in the network as to minimize a measure of the difference between the actual output vector of the net and the desired output vector. As a result of the weight adjustments, internal hidden units which are not part of the input or output come to represent important features of the task domain and the regularities in the task are captured by the interactions of these units. If this brief summary of backpropagation still sounds difficult to you, a much simpler explanation of it is the idea of allowing a backward pass in a neural network to adjust the weights or importance given to each input or decision to minimize the error and reach a more accurate prediction in the output. Even though they have demonstrated how this concept works with this diagram consisting of inputs, hidden nodes, weights, and biases, there are a ton of more simplified diagrams on the internet that you can use as a guide. Whichever way you choose, it is really important for you to fully understand the concept of backpropagation, how activation functions in each layer's neurons work, and how gradient descent uses the cumulative information from the forward and backward passes to calculate the minimum gradient to minimize the system's loss, which is the difference between the desired output and the system's predicted output. If by now neural networks seem like a black box to you and you even need a more foundational understanding of them, I can refer you to this important paper called Neural Networks Are Decision Trees. The authors use an analogy of a tree to represent a neural network and how information flows through it from input to output. Do not let these formulas prevent you from reading the paper. I promise you will understand, even with basic knowledge of neural networks and high school math. But if you are a visual learner and need an even more basic introduction to how neural networks work, I highly recommend this video from 3Blue1Brown called But What is a Neural Network? Hopefully after this video, you will be able to go back to the previous papers and understand them better. Your AI and machine learning journey will not be complete without understanding the concept of convolutional neural network or CNN and its several updated structures and algorithms. CNNs are deep learning architectures that are mainly used for image recognition, analysis, and classification. CNNs can have many layers, each trying to detect a feature in the image. The earliest CNN architecture can be traced back to the 1980s neocognitron paper for using convolution in a neural network for feature extraction and classification. And as the author Fukushima states, the network acquires an ability to recognize stimulus patterns based on the geometrical similarity or gestalt of their shapes without being affected by their positions. This idea was developed by subsequent researchers for handwritten digit recognition tasks in LoNet, but most ML researchers associated with the ImageNet challenge of visual recognition in 2010, which resulted in the famous AlexNet architecture of CNN. The CNN architectures have been improved by several other systems such as GoogleNet with a deeper network without fully connected layers and ResNet with a residual learning framework for training. A residual network is a stack of many residual blocks, each with two 3x3 convolution layers. 
Whichever method you choose to work with, it's crucial to understand the main concepts of CNNs, such as feature extraction, sparse connectivity, weight sharing, and filtering in convolution operation, or the sliding filter which moves over the input image to detect features and produce a feature map for the presence of any specific feature. But perhaps the paper you should be paying the most attention to is Attention is All You Need by a group of Google researchers who proposed the famous transformer architecture as the backbone of GPT-based models, which is mainly used in text generation. This architecture allows the models to assess the importance of each word in a sequence. In other words, it assesses which word deserves more attention in each context. It identifies the distance between words that influence each other. This attention mechanism processes relevant input words and masks other information or words that are not very relevant. Owing to the parallel processing, transformers have this attention mechanism which lets them learn from complex relationship between words and by extension ideas in natural languages. I have a longer video explaining the transformer language model based on this paper. I will leave its link to. Regardless, you still need to learn the main concepts of this paper, which are the attention mechanism, encoder decoder models, and how word embeddings work in this architecture. The next two very, very, very important research papers, which resulted in very, very, very important advances in fine-tuning generative models, yes, you guessed it right, are the papers associated with LoRa or low-rank adaptation and QLoRa or quantized low-rank adaptation methods. Apart from understanding what they actually are, I suggest you spend a good amount of time learning the main concepts of these methods, such as the PEFT or parameter efficient fine tuning technique, trainable parameters, the update matrices, and different quantization methods. I believe the best way you can grasp the underlying concepts of LoRa and QLoRa is by hands on fine tuning of a small language model with small amount of data, just to see how things work. I have already made a three part hands on video tutorial series for full fine tuning and fine tuning with LoRa and QLoRa, where I have fully explained not just the concepts, but also all the details of configuring LoRa adapters for each task type, as well as bits and bytes configuration details for quantizing your model. I even went further to give detailed information about different training arguments such as gradient accumulation and checkpointing, batching, learning rate, and choosing the best optimizer, as well as how to run the models only on CPU for poor researchers like you and me. One more important concept and paper to end this list of papers, and that is RAG, or Retrieval Augmented Generation for Knowledge Intensive NLP Tasks. If you've been wandering around AI channels, you must have heard about RAG-based systems and how they facilitate the access and retrieval of external sources of information, such as your local datasets and files, as additional resources for the LLM to generate responses. If you have already tried any of the code-based and non-code-based RAG systems that are available plentiful on YouTube and on my channel too, you are one step closer to understanding the underlying concepts in this research paper, such as sequence-to-sequence -sequence tasks, non-parametric retriever or dense passage retriever, parametric generator for end-to-end -end generation in knowledge-intensive tasks that deserve your careful consideration if you are aiming at more generative AI-based area of research or work. These papers are really good starting points to get you fully grounded with important concepts in AI in general and in fundamental machine learning techniques. But if you want to go even further, I will include the full list of references in my GitHub repository with its link in the description box. And here's the video tutorial I promised you.